Hello YouTube and welcome back to X-Plane 11. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and today we are going to be taking a look at Fly With Lua Next Generation. I'm going to be going through the download, the install, showing you some of the features, showing you what it can do, giving you an overview of the other things that it can do and downloading a few scripts to give you an idea as to what certain scripts can do as well. So if you want to know how to download, install and use Fly with Lua NG, which is a successor to a previous video I did, which was Fly with Lua Complete, make sure you stay tuned in this video. I highly recommend it because this is a must have add on for anybody playing X Plane 11. All right, so here we are on the Fly With Lua NG page. Now, the first thing we need to do is, of course, download it. So that is the address, the URL for it. That will be in the description box below, as will the URLs for 1, 2, and 3 also be in the description box below. So what is Fly With Lua? What is Lua? It sounds like a random name, but Lua is actually a lightweight programming language probably similar to JavaScript in a way based off Ruby, Python, that sort of stuff, or around that kind of around that kind of language, that kind of style. Um, it is quite easy to learn how to use and it is very popular when creating little scripts or also in the past has been popular in, in games. I mean for example, I think uh, Freelancer, personal favorites of mine. Uh, Freelancer used to use it. Supreme Commander used to use Lua scripting. Um, I think Total War used Lua scripting, as well as many, many games have used uh, Lua scripting. I think Payday, Payday 2, for those people who like playing those sorts of title, they use Lua scripting. And that was the primary scripting language for those particular titles. Now, Beyond that, you can use Lua, Lua scripts for many different things. Uh, you can use it to calculate something or connect to something or create a, to create a connection to something, uh, some sort of interface, which is exactly one of the things that this does. However, instead of you and, you and me having to learn it or having to use it, what we can do is for those of us who are not programmers, so perhaps you might not know how to program or you might not be as confident in your programming skills as perhaps uh, I am or other people are. Instead of doing that, what you do is you download this, Fly With Lua, and other people create scripts for you that you just place in there and that's it. It is all done for you. So this is why this thing is vital. So we're going to download that. So just make sure you go ahead and download that. And you can see here, it says, what is Fly's Lua? It offers rapid development system to get it deep into X-Plane. Easy to understand, detail manual is included and it supports all the platforms. Use LuaJIT, which is really good. A very, very fast code execution off there. In fact, it does say right there. Though the original Lua interpreter was fairly fast, LuaJIT is faster. So if you know lots about Lua, great you can create a bunch of stuff if you do not know a lot you can still use this and make tiny little tools or indeed download other people's scripts and bring them in so that is what i'm going to show you so first of all give this a download then i will leave links to one two and three uh, these are just examples but i thought these might be interesting examples so first first one the first one is fps performance boost script it's apparently not even a week old. I thought I'd just give it a give it a look. So it says here it will work on how it draws distant objects in the game. We're going to see. We're going to put this to the test. Uh, better engine heat effect. I did actually just see this. In fact, let me play that for you and take a close look at the engine effects. And I think this is very, very well done. That's fantastic. And I definitely, definitely want that. So there you go. There's another one that we are going to be having a look at. That one is probably not going to have a demo in in this video apart from that, but I'm going to show you how to install that. And the other one for my particular flight control, I have a 
SciTech or Logitech X52 Pro. I think I've got the SciTech version. Still quite old. Hold on. Does it read SciTech somewhere? Yep, mine's still SciTech. Uh, X52 Pro. And as you can see, it will give me a lot of additional tools and be able for be giving me colors and things like that so that it is more interactive to me. Maybe when I disable the autopilot, I can have something blinking or I can use these controls here that I do not use. Uh, these ones at the bottom, these ones down here that I do not use and I could use them for doing things like uh, changing my communications like I did in Flight Simulator or perhaps even changing things like my um, barometric pressure or I could change anything really. I'm sure there's many, many different things that I can script this on. So there we go. Those are the three. So I want you to go ahead and download all three. You do not have to if you don't want to. And these are the ones I'm going to be using for a demonstration. Now, I like placing all of my stuff in folders before I install them. So let me go ahead and... Oh, there's a landing rates one as well. Uh... Well, that's awkward. I think I accidentally closed that. Hmm. Okay, well, there's another one. Landing rate 1.71. I'm sure you can find that if you just search uh, search up here for landing rate 1.71, and you will find that as well. So, I like putting them in a game mods folder, as I always do. So, game mods, X-Plane 11. I've got FWL Fly with Lua. I then have this side over here. So this is my X-Plane root directory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip these. And in here, I'm looking for the folder called Fly with Lua. And I go to Resources. I go to Plugins. And where it says Fly with Lua, that is where that goes. So I'm just dragging that in into here, which is what I have already done. Now, the next step, this is very, very important. You need to go to Scripts. There is something here that says, please read the manual, which is over in this documentation. You can see all the information, all the documentation that you need to know is there. I'm going to have a read of this to create a few of my own things, I think. But it says here, please read the manual. When you bring it into here, you need to delete the please read the manual Lua file. Otherwise, you're going to have a massive box on the screen wherever you move your mouse, and it's going to be telling you that, you you know, a smart person would read the manual and then delete the file. And there'll be a little radio um, rainbow colored text also telling you that this text will not will not be deleted until you read the manual or something like that. So make sure that you delete that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some some of these so if you've got scripts disabled, you can copy any of these you want. And these are some of the example example ones. Some of them are really good. Some of them are mildly useful, I would say. And some of them I probably would not use. So I've got the automatic set Q&H, which is uh, one of them that there it is. So that's one. Uh, CADA, I cannot remember what those two were. FMC input, which I actually downloaded separately a long time ago. That allows me to press F1 on my keyboard. And then whilst I'm using, for example, the Zebo 737, I can type and it imports it on the FMC. So that is a really, really handy one. You can just look for FMC input if you want. HUD module test, which is available here. QNH helper, which is also, I believe, available here. There it is. Copy those over, and then what you need to do is you need to go over to this. We've got the boost FPS. All I'm going to do is drag that one in. There you go. Heat effect fix. I'm going to drag that one in, like so. And you can see in the readmes, it does say, please put it into Fly with Lua scripts. And landing rate as well. Same thing. How to install. This is how you install them. And this one over here. Now, this one has two. So I'm going to have a look at the readme here. What does it say? What am I supposed to do with it? So you have to be quite uh, quite careful. I'm assuming that's all I have to do is place it in. Oh, I'm going to assume that all I've got to do is... Ah, we've got example definitions, readme. Fascinating. Well, I'm going to stick it in here. I think that is just some documents, yeah, documentation and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to throw that right there. So that allows me to compile my own type of uh, Lua script. There we go. 
So now what do you do? Well, all you do is start up X-Plane and it will be ready for you just like that. So let's go into X-Plane and give some of these a go. Okay, so here we are in X-Plane 11 and in fact I am going to just start this aircraft up because it's a little bit quiet. So in X-Plane 11, as you can see, nothing really looks that different apart from the fact that it says at the top, Lua stopped, which is something that I am going to look into momentarily. And there we go, it looks like uh, Lua is running again. So if you get Lua stopped, occasionally all you've got to do is go up to plugins, fly with Lua, try to resume Lua engine. It does say not recommended, but I think that is because of a small mistake I made. I did not drag everything from that X52 one over, so I did need to drag the folder over as well, which I can probably uh, show you now. That folder needs to be dragged over as well, which is what I've done. So here we are, and it doesn't look any different at the moment. We go outside, nothing looks different. Should probably set this up though correctly. There we go. Right, so everything looks pretty much the same. How does this, what's Fly with Lua doing? Well, first of all, if we, for example, go down to that corner, move over here, we've got a whole bunch of things. So this is something that is really quite useful, I think. And the reason I think this is useful is because for those people who are perhaps flying VFR, and I am going to demonstrate this, and are not using head tracking or VR, instead of having to go down here, you behave, there we go. Instead of having to go down here and change these controls and not be looking up there and having to fiddle around with this, all you can do is go over here and change them right here. So for example, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to change my squawk code to 4276. You can see it has changed there. It's red. If I click that, that should go from standby or from off, which is that one there, to standby, to on. Back to standby, back to on. I wonder what, if it's in alt, it's there. Back to standby, back to on. And there you go. So we can mess around with that without having to actually touch it. The same thing can be said, for example, for this down here. Let's change the ADF. And you can actually see the ADF changing right there. So our NDB frequency is, is actually changing. So that's great. We can also change it. Now this is COM1 NAV1 on this. So it, it's going to be messing around with those. So we can say, right, look, there you go. Now this is particularly cool because it changes the active frequency, which is rather interesting. So there you go. There's the COM frequency change. There's the NAV frequency being changed. Nice and simple. So that gives us, that means that we do not have to look over here to do anything. I could, for example, switch on the autopilot. I'm going to switch on the pitot heater. We've got strobe lights on. That looks pretty good. So what I could do is I can set up my autopilot. That's off. That's on. There you go. I could set up uh, my heading bug, which instead of doing that, I could literally be looking out the window. And I'm going to look down here to give you, give you an idea. But look, I'm going to change the heading bug. And you can see it is changing the bug as I want. And I can, I can change it in groups of, in a... Uh, jumps of 10. So let's go ahead and set the heading bug up for 030. I think that's the runway that I'm going to be taking off from. Uh, we'll leave the ADF. We're not going to be using the ADF. Here's another one. Uh, let's say, for example, my QNH is incorrect. In fact, there you go. There's our QNH helper. Tells us what my QNH is being set at. Instead of having to zoom in and try and see exactly what you've got, it tells you exactly what it is in a nice handy box. So my QNH is 3009 or what is it? 1019 hexapascals. Now that is not the correct QNH. Let's say I do not know the QNH here. Well, I've set something up by pressing B. It will use the automatic QNH adjuster, which is something that used to be in Flight Simulator or Flight Simulator 10 I used to use. QNH adjusted. And there you go. Adjust the QNH. Job done. We can go up here. Look at plugins. What do we have? Fly with Lua. Fly with Lua macros. We could bring in 
we could take a look at a, a few things over here or we can set things up we could enter a line of code we could do whatever we wanted so let's let's give this one a go there's one about landing rates I'm not sure how to show the landing rates one uh, there it is landing rate show debug info shows you and replay okay that is not particularly what I am after I'm trying to figure out where the landing rate is going to be shown so let's go over here and let's see if there is anything here for us uh, there's the autopilot one and that's the QNH one and then there's some debugging so there isn't much available on these particular scripts but let's let's give this a go so release the brakes slip off the uh, controls well done me uh, I'm just going to I think that's the runway I want so I'm going to fly along or fly along drive along here I'll switch on some lighting whilst I'm at it uh, that can go to max that can go to max let's switch on some lights see even lights I could set up if I wanted to on the uh, I could set up lights on this is gonna have a lot of friction oh that's a lot of friction uh, I could set up lights on something on a fly with Lua script and have it up come up in on the side somewhere. That would be awesome. Uh, what is this one? Is it zero three? It is zero three. Okay. So here we go. Time to time to take off on runway zero three. Flaps can come down. There we go. About five degrees of flaps. And let's go for it. Let's have a nice takeoff. And then we'll try the autopilot as an example of what Fly, Fly with Lua can do. And you can connect Fly with Lua with, for example, your SciTech uh, controls, the extra controls, or your peripherals, different peripherals. You could. What's the rate? There's gear up. We, you could connect it with different peripherals and see exactly uh, which peripherals work in whichever way. So if you do not have a peripheral that has a specific program that works with X-Plane, well, guess what? You could do it with this. Okay, should we have a look at the autopilot? Let's set the autopilot to be 3,000 feet sure. We'll go for a 500 foot per minute. No, let's go for a 1,000 foot per minute climb. Activate the autopilot. Activate the altitude. And we should go into a climb. Activate heading hold. We're not going into a climb. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Activate the vertical speed. I'm damaging my flaps here, but the flaps can go in. And there we have it. It is doing whatever it needs to do. Now, there isn't a speed hold on this particular aircraft, but I can try. In fact, there you go. It has actually, or it is trying to, maintain the speed. You can actually see the throttles moving. Now, this one isn't particularly great, but I'm going to switch off that speed hold go back to where we were which is there but we could do whatever we wanted to on on this particular setup which is this is the whole idea behind something something like this let's uh let's see we're looking at we're looking out here we do not want to fiddle around with that we're we're looking out or we're looking at that way we would say okay we want to head somewhere off in that direction here look it's london out there Let's go ahead and uh, turn. Let's turn heading 090. And there you go. I did not have to look away. I did not have to look back or do anything of the sort. Now, this could be very handy, for example, if I was not using the autopilot and instead I was uh, doing something like... Is that London up ahead? It certainly looks like it. Yep, that's recognisable. That's London, all right. Is that the BT Tower? It's not the BT Tower, it's just a crane. That looks a little bit like the BT Tower. But, for example, if I was to uh, be flying this without autopilot and I wanted to change a radio frequency, I could very easily do so. That is the kind of thing that this is helpful for. And, of course, there are loads of different other things. As I said, I can figure out how to connect this up with my with my joystick, if I can configure that, I could control it from my from my uh, throttle quadrant or throttle controller. That would be really really helpful. Let's see if this works. We're going up to 3,000 feet. It should. 
let's see if it yep there you go 3,000 feet it has stabilized itself and we are good I can now bring this back there you go bringing that back to 2100 bringing my mixture back and there you go there you have it I am now cruising really really easily without any difficulty and Fly with Lou has actually helped me do that and there is so much more it can do I've only shown you the tip of the iceberg so is this a must-have 100% if you use X-Plane 11 you need to get this add-on it is free it is massively useful given what the community make and a lot of other add-ons require this a lot of scripts require this for example in next week's video I'm going to be showing you a new cloud add-on or a cloud add-on that's been updated recently that's what I want to try out there is a haze add-on on top of that that requires fly with Lua so it is really really important to make sure that you have these things is that the M11 down there? I think that is the M11 what do you know? so there you have it there is a short installation and demonstration of fly with Lua hopefully you guys enjoyed that if you did please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel clicking on the notification bell that would really really be good for me um, hitting the like button means I get to see what people think of it leaving comments saying yes this was helpful that would be really helpful as well so I can read those and if you have any trouble do leave a comment and I can try and advise or at least at least link you to perhaps a forum where they can advise these things if you can afford to do so please do consider supporting me on patreon www.patreon.com slash ec gadget your support will be massively massively appreciated also i am going to point out i do have slightly better frames i do have slightly better frames uh, but unfortunately it looks like it is cutting out some buildings but the, I remember there was a frame add-on that I had used. It has given me about four, four or five frames more, I think. It isn't huge, but it has given me about four or five frames more. But anyway, as I said, you can support me on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash ecgadget. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. It would really, really help me out. Also, you can find me on social media at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram. I'm going to look for a picture to take. There we go, that's rather interesting. Something like that, perhaps? Oh, why did I do that? Go back, go up, go back, look over that way. There we go, that looks like a reasonable. Get rid of that, that looks like a reasonable picture well that is all from me and i'll see you guys next time in x-plane 11 as i said where i'm going to be taking a look at a, a different cloud add-on these are the default x-plane clouds i do have the active sky ones as well available available to me that's a word available to me and i'm going to be trying out the new freeware ones so that's for those people who want better clouds but do not want to go for ones that are paidware that's a bit of an idea, so make sure you stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys then.